Yo guys, what's going on? It's Dub here. Today I'm making a video to show all the ways to time remap inside of DaVinci Resolve and anything else that you may need to know. There have been tutorials in the past, but they were in the edit page and I will be showing you guys why this is not a good way to do it compared to the new way we do it now. So getting right into it, I'm gonna be using an example clip right here. As you can see, this is just a COD clip right here of a cinematic of a guy falling over. And I'm gonna be showing the old way we used to do it. So what we used to do is is we used to just right click on the actual clip and go retime controls and here we used to do our add speed point you know add speed point add another one and then we used to change it to 50 percent let's say and then we used to do like 200 percent and drag it back a slow motion to a fast kind of thing like that but there are much better ways to do it and this result is actually pretty bad even if you change the retime process up here and all of your motion estimation so the only time i recommend using the edit page for time remapping or speed ramping is just to actually slow mo your clip so let's say you want to make this slow down and you could always just change the speed down to let's say 50 percent if you want a specific value you can always right click the clip go to retime curve and then you'll just have to pull this down right here change the button from retime frame three times speed and then from here you can just drag the time down to a certain percentage you like and then from there you can just change your retime process to optical flow enhance better and then smoother and then you'll just have to right click and cache it or if you have smart on you it'll automatically cache for you so after you do that it'll basically just cache your footage and you'll have your slow motion clip which is pretty good it looks great and i think it'll work in most cases but for actual retiming if you want to have specific parts that are slower and quicker i don't think the edit page is viable anymore compared to doing it in fusion so now i'm going to be showing two different ways to do it the quick way and the more advanced way to do it in fusion all right guys so on the first way to do it let's say i already have my other clips down on the timeline so let's say this is my first clip my solid color here then this is the second clip i want to use and then the third clip i could have trimmed this however i want so i control b split it and then do that just so i could have this part but that wouldn't be the whole clip and that's why the more advanced version will let you choose exactly what you want but this is just a quicker way to do it if you want to retime a clip that's already there and you don't need to make any more adjustments to it so let's say i have this right here i want to right click and go new compound clip create the compound clip and once you have created the compound clip right click and go into fusion once you're in fusion you just want to add a optical flow node and then you want to add a time stretcher this is similar to my twix method if you've seen that video but this is just for retiming so go to advanced turn up the work count one go to your time stretcher and then here you're going to need a keyframe your frame so go to the first frame on this timeline and then keyframe right here go to the end use the right arrow key to go one more to the right and then keyframe it again look at the number right here so that's 84 type in 84 and then now you will see your whole clip is like this so you can time remap using the blend option but you might get some more warps than you normally would using flow but try both and whichever one you prefer just use that one both work but sometimes better in different cases so for me i'm just going to use flow and then clamp edges backwards and previous next and then i'm going to open up my spawn and then from here i'm I'm just going to make a graph so this one can come up this one can come right and there we go now i have it fast at the beginning and then it'll slow down at the end so you can go back to your edit page right click cache color output or if you have smart it'll automatically cache for you and now you just gotta wait all right it's done caching and as you can see this is how the clip turned out you can see more warps around where it gets more slow mode because you can tell right here there is more of a straight line so instead of pulling it if i want to do something like this it'll have less warps because there will be less slow motion here and now if i show you guys once it's cached you can see that there is no more warping until this portion which is where the flat line starts on my graph but the trade-off for less warping is at the beginning it's not as strong of a curve so you don't see as much of that quick movement but it doesn't really matter if your clip is short or you don't want a lot of warp so you can always have a different graph too so just try stuff out and see what works best for you and your edit and that's all for the first method
All right, guys, now I'm going to be showing you guys the second method. This one is a little bit more complicated, but it's still relatively easy to do. So this is more for a use case of you have a clip that you need to put in your timeline. So let's say I need to have my clip fit right in between here, but this is how long the actual clip is. And I just don't want to use a little portion of it, but I want to use the whole entire clip. So how you're going to go about doing that is go and grab a fusion comp right here and just drag that into your timeline. And then once it's in your timeline, cut it to the size you want and then put it right in between so now what you're going to do is go find your clip you can either use multiple timelines to keep this organized but for this tutorial i'm just going to use one timeline right here and you're going to want to compound clip it and then name this something that you can remember because if you're in a project with a lot of media it'll be hard to find within all of your different medias in your master pool so make sure you name this something you can remember i'm going to use clip retime one so now that you have your compound clip here you can either get rid of this or just leave it there for me i'm just going to get rid of it and you're going to want to open your fusion comp and once you're in your fusion comp you're going to want to go to media pool find your clip that you named i'm going to put this in here so once you drag that in you can just see right here this is the important part that you want to pay attention to it shows the total amount of frames in this media so for me it's a zero to 83 so i have 83 frames in this media so you're going to want to connect that to your media out and then add a time stretcher and then your optical flow like the other method but this time after you do your optical flow settings you're going to want to go to your time stretcher and remember you can always check again by clicking the media so i'm going to want to go to the very end right click and then i'm going to want to type in 83 keyframe that and then at the first frame i'm going to keyframe it to zero and make sure you delete any other keyframes that it created but now as you can see you have all of your clip mashed into one small fusion comp and blend might result in a little bit of a blurry look but try both once again blend or flow but for me i'm just going to use flow and then i'm going to clamp edges backwards prev and now you can do your graph so let's say i want again to do my fastest slow graph i'm just going to do this and then now i'm going to let this cache in the edit page all right guys the cache is done and as you can see there we go. We have our full clip retimed with the slow mo and the fastest slow, and it's fit inside of this fusion comp even though the original clip is this size right here. So that is how to fit your clip and retime it inside of a specific area like this, in case you don't wanna have this long of a clip, but you still wanna have the footage to be there. In this method, you have to be very careful because if they are too strong, this is quite a small clip with a lot of frames. So your graph might be very strong and you might go across a lot of frames if you're not careful. So just adjust it and kind of be easy on it. The last part of this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to retime specific parts where you want it to go fast and slow i have my clip right here and let's say you have a song that has multiple beats make sure to mark those off how you can do that is by hitting the little marker button right here or pressing m on your keyboard so make sure you also put your markers on the actual timeline and not on clips because if you put them on the clips they will not show up in your spline tab let's say i have a music beat here 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 and here i want to sync to this will sync the video to those beats and not to the actual video so if you want to do that you can but for me i'm going to choose to sync to the actual video so let's say i want to sync to him falling over right here right at the start and the end so i'm going to add the marker not on the clip but on the timeline like this and then right click comp the video and then go into fusion do the same settings as before since i've done this already i'm just going to copy paste from last time and as you can see here we have the whole clip but when you open your spline tab you can see right here that we have our marker right here and this is, makes it very, very easy to sync without having to go back and forth between the edit page and the fusion page. So I'm just going to grab my little marker right here, go over to it and make sure you go to your time stretcher and click right here to keyframe it. So now we have another keyframe to this specific point of the video. And now you can do a lot with this. So you can actually change the source time to change where in the video this actually is. But for me, I want to keep the whole video normal, but just change the speeds that the video plays at. So I'm going to control control A to select everything. And for the start, I think I want to have it go slow at the end and fast at the beginning. So I'm going to do this kind of graph. And then I want to have another speed increase at this marker. So I'm going to go and hit control to only select this and not affect anything else. And then drag this one up right about until there. And then the end, I want to drag down as well. And now, as you can see, 
I'm just gonna change my settings again right here. And if we go back into the edit page, just cache it and I will show you the result. The caching is done for this clip. So now I'm gonna show you guys the results right here. And there you go. As you can see, it is fast at the beginning, then it slows down and then it hits the next marker and goes quick again. There is a little bit of warping right here, but you can fix that if you want. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. If you go in Fusion, you can see the individual frames of warping and where it's especially bad. So let's say this frame right here, it's warping pretty bad. So what I'm gonna do is just keyframe it and then change the number right here to a whole value frame. Instead of having decimals, you can see the first two, just change it to that. So I'm gonna change it to 67. And then right on my arrow key to see the next frame, you can see the warp as well, 67. I'm gonna change this one to 68 instead. And then you can keep going for how many frames of warp you actually have, but that will generally fix the problem if you have especially bad frames of warping. So for me, that should be good on this clip. All right, guys, I'm gonna play it back now. And as you can see, those two major warp spots that I showed are now gone. So keep in mind that if there is any major spots of warping, you don't have to redo your whole graph, just change it to a whole number like this. And also, if you have very bad warping, try to fix your graph. So imagine that the normal speed with no warping starts at the bottom and it's a straight line like the original. You're gonna wanna try to change those points that are especially warping to be more of a straight line like this, right? But it will get rid of the intensity of your time remapping if you do that, because you can see the curve here. But if you made it straight, then there would be less time remapping and impact on the actual time remap. So you kind of have to find a balance in between of less warping and still having your time remap happen. But generally, the warping occurs on the slow-mo and the flat lines of the graph rather than the fast points because those will just go by like this. But lines where they are more flat like this tend to warp more often than not. So just be careful with it and mess around until you find something you like. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you learn everything you need to know about time remapping inside of DaVinci Resolve and all the different methods to use. I took a while to put together this video because I tend to use a lot. So I wanted to make sure not to give out any bad information about it. If you enjoyed, please like this video and subscribe. I will be making more DaVinci Resolve tutorials and editing content in the future. And I'm sorry for being slightly inactive on my posts. I have been dealing with some injuries that I've been trying to heal and it's taken me a while. So I wanted to get something out there for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Later.